Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hermitcraft. Last time we modernized the tree farm look, or at least half the tree farm. We're going to finish the other half today. But first I want to do some things that you guys recommended. And one of those is that you guys wanted me to actually put down effects on these beacons right here to make them actually do something. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and give ourselves speed and haste on all these beacons. So we'll probably just go ahead and boom, there we go. Easy. So yeah, that's that one. Uh, and we'll go ahead and put a haste effect on this one because why not there we go uh, these are all only level one beacons i couldn't i could have made them like you know level two or three or four level beacons but eh you know i think it's fine i think it's fine so we'll do a speed on this one and we'll just sort of alternate as we go around here so there we go ladies and gentlemen pretty straightforward so we now have the ability to toggle speed and haste in this region with all these different beacons uh, all activating the effects so that's fantastic also, I need to check some of our farms, some of our automatic farms we have around here. Let's just go back in here. Yeah, so we need more shulker boxes for the melon pump pumpkin farm. Uh, yeah, all the shulker boxes are filled up in there, and I wanted to check this. Yeah, so this is our bone meal farm. This produces bone meal automatically from the, uh, the fox farm, from the berry farm over there. Uh, and yeah, as expected, as I anticipated when we made this, we're getting a lot of bone meal from this. So let's just go ahead and craft all this up here we'll just grab a bunch like this and we'll put it into bone blocks there we go pretty straightforward fantastic and then we'll get some more out do the same thing there we go very nice okay I should probably also check the kelp farm because that is probably also quite full yep it's pretty full we should probably craft up some dry kelp blocks Alright guys, so the automatic farms are now all taken care of, and it's now time that we go ahead and take down the rest of this tree farm. So every single block of this tree farm must go, and we're going to transform it into something like this, with the polished diorite, the andesite wool, and the black stained glass panes. Um, so we're going to do that for this entire tree farm here, and that jungle tree farm up there, and the spruce tree farm over here. And that should be good, I think. Yeah, that should be great. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, you might also notice that the elytra course was blocked from last time. So the elytra course comes from here, and it goes right through here. And it used to go around this way and then through here. But as you can see, it can't go that way anymore. <laughs> There's a giant tree farm in the way now. Uh, this whole river valley has actually been filled in. So we may have to cut a hole into the side of this tree farm here or just simply like redirect where the elytra course goes like redirect it around here or something like maybe we could have it fly through this valley instead and then around here through this thing like this bypassing this uh, current loop right here um, so yeah that is another possibility that we might do but we'll have to see what it looks like once we are finished with updating this portion of the tree farm so Let's go ahead and get started on this. We need to take everything down here and make it look nice and pretty. And uh, yeah, basically modernize this tree farm. Alright, so here we go with the time lapse. So we're building up our tree farm, just putting down a lot of andesite and andesite walls. And of course chopping down a whole lot of the stripped oak logs and the stripped dark oak logs and all the other types of oak logs we have here. Uh, by the way, about every one second in this time lapse is two minutes in real life. So this is like 120 times speed. Uh, which is how I'm getting stuff done so quickly here. You can see the sun just like whizzing by. Um, but yeah, after I cut down a whole bunch of wood around the jungle tree farm and the oak tree farm and the spruce tree farm, uh, we ran into a problem. We actually ran out of andesite. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are currently high atop the Concorp kelp farm up here, and we're looking over at the new section of the tree farm we have built up, and it's looking pretty good so far. You can see what it looks like if we come on over here out over the ocean. Yeah. Definitely looks a lot better than it did previously with the polished andesite and the andesite. And yeah, we sort of made it not so jagged. It's a lot more square in a lot of places. And unfortunately, we have actually run out of andesite yet again. All we got are these 27 polished andesite left. Um, so, yeah, that means we gotta find a new source of andesite. So, we gotta finish up this whole backside. We're gonna expand the jungle farm just a little bit, just so it's a little bit more square. So we're gonna need to fill in all this land back here as well. Uh, and then we have all this to go on this side. So this needs to be filled in with andesite. So we have a little bit left to go here, but for the most part, a lot of it is cleared out. Looks like a little bit of 
a little bit of jungle wood, strip jungle wood still left there anyway. But uh, yeah, we need to find a new source of andesite. So big rocks is totally out. We bought them out yesterday. Let's check the factory, see if we got anything in there. So believe it or not, we actually have over half a million items, but not a single piece of andesite. So <laughs> we're going to have to find another source somewhere else. I'm thinking a good source might be the villagers themselves over here. So let's just get on over here. Let's go check out the masons, see if they got any polished andesite. Oh, and look at that. Good old Mr. Diamond. Mr. Diamond. Coming through for us in the clutch. So there's our polished andesite. We can get that no problem. Fantastic. Uh, let's see. Anybody else? There's some polished diorite. I don't think they actually sell the normal diorite. I'm pretty sure they don't, at least. Yeah, just a polished variety, so... Yeah, that polished variety, that'll help us out quite a bit, actually, so... Yeah, we can get a little bit more of the polished from here, and then we can just get a couple of andesite and get the, uh, the rest of the walls. So, this will work out quite nicely. Let me grab my trading box here. We'll grab ourselves a couple of emeralds. And we'll start to do some trading for some andesite. Fantastic. So we got basically unlimited polished andesite now from our villagers, which is fantastic. And yeah, we can also make the andesite we desire from this stuff, diorite. Luckily, I've been saving diorite up for just such an occasion. And we also, yep, have some cobblestone. And... Some of you will probably know the recipe for andesite is actually diorite plus cobblestone equals andesite. So, bada boom, bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. There we go, and then we can just craft this right into andesite wall. Fantastic! Okay, our andesite problems are totally solved now. So back into building the tree farm now, now that our andesite problems are all solved and we had a lot of andesite to place down here because the jungle tree farm is quite tall up. It's on a very tall mountain plateau. So a lot of andesite, andesite walls going down here as well as a lot of sea lanterns at the base. Those sea lanterns shine through the andesite walls to provide some lighting at the base of the tree farm. Uh, so you can see that right here, a lot of andesite going down. And I also decided to go ahead and fill in all the spaces uh, where we needed space to be filled in because I didn't want a bunch of dark areas underneath the tree farm unnecessarily. Um, so yeah, we did that and we moved all the sea lanterns. We then had to place down all the black stained glass around the entire farm. Then we had to do the pathways. Now the pathways take a surprising amount of time because you actually have to cut down all the trees to basically move where the trees are. So you can see all the podzol spots. That's where we plant all the dark oak trees here. Then for the spruce farm, I decided to go with a pathway along the outside, so I had to cut down all the outside spruce trees, and then finally cut a path around here, and then fill it with leaves and the diorite slabs. And then finally, same thing with the jungle tree farm, had to move a little bit of redstone for this jungle tree farm. But ultimately, yeah, I got the pathway done around the outside and filling with diorite and complete. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you saw from the time lapse, our tree farm is now complete. And here is what it's looking like when you're actually inside of the tree farm. We did have to move some redstone stuff, for instance, this send a storage chest here at the jungle tree farm. Uh, we had to move this over from, I think it was like right here or so. Um, so yeah, everything is working nicely. We got our ender pearl stations here to help us get on top of trees easy without even having to use rockets. Uh, here's the spruce farm right here with our, yeah, our pathways around here. This whole tree farm now is a lot more open, a lot more spacious, and I think a lot more useful because it actually has more wood now on each level. I think every level actually increased the uh, the space we can grow the trees on. So that is absolutely fantastic. We'll just walk through the entire thing here and head on down to the base. And I actually want to see how much wood both the regular wood type and the stripped wood type we got from making this farm because it should be a lot. It should be a lot. So let's go ahead and make our way in here. I'm going to try and consolidate all these boxes and yeah, we'll see how much total stripped wood and fences and other wood pieces we got from this wood farm. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and go on in, take a look what we got inside here. So looks like we got the first two chests lit up. So yeah, this is all the wood we got from this, or most of the wood we got from this, I should say. A lot of stripped wood, especially jungle and acacia. Those were probably the, the most we got. A lot more wood here, more stripped wood, more birch wood, stripped 
birch wood. Yeah, and more logs here. Wow, that's a lot. That is quite a lot. I think some of this, like some of the leaves and stuff, were in here before, but yeah, quite a lot of stuff. So, what are we going to do with this stuff? Well, luckily, I got in our ender chest a couple of boxes with our log boxes, and we can just go ahead and fill this up right here. And then we also, if I make my way over here, I also keep some products, wood products boxes. Uh, so let's see, it should be in here. Yeah. So these are all the products of certain wood types, so like all jungle wood products will be in here, so everything you can craft up. So that way I can sort of like minimize the amount of stuff I actually craft. Uh, so we can use this as well. So let's go ahead and just bring all these over here and we're going to put these into boxes and potentially we could even sell the stripped wood and stripped logs at the USS Undercut. So give me a second here, I'm going to go through these, I'll be right back. So guys, because we got so many strip logs today, we decided to implement a new policy here at the USS Undercut. Uh, so now if you buy one stack of logs at regular price, you get one stack of the strip logs free. So if you buy, let's say, two stacks of spruce logs, you get two stacks of whatever type of stripped log you want for free. So that's a promotional offer right there, just for the celebratory opening of the modernized tree farm. So hopefully some hermits will take advantage of that and get some stripped logs for free. So anyways, let's head on back to Concorp now. We have to now, I think, take a look at where the elytra course runs and see if we can make a hole in the tree farm so that the elytra course can continue on. So the only other thing we need to rectify with this tree farm is we need a hole here that we can fly through with the elytra. Now, if we take a look over here at Grian's elytra loop thingamajig right here... Um, so this thing is, let's see, one, two, three, four, four and a half blocks tall, it looks like. So we want to probably make the hole about that tall, and it looks like it's one, two, three blocks wide. So it's pretty narrow in actuality, but let's just go ahead and get this stuff taken down here. And so I'm thinking, let's see, let's make sure we have a, a clear path here through this area. So we're coming over here, we're gonna be going pretty fast, we'll come down this way, this way, and then we want to go like right there, basically. So that was about, I don't know, maybe six blocks up or so. So probably like right here would be a good spot to have this come out here, I, I would say. And then on the other side, we want to basically have it come out right here or so. So I probably want to remove I want to remove this bamboo here, I'm thinking. There we go. Probably have it come out right here, and that way they can, you know, fly around these bamboo here, and then through the next loop. I think that should work. So, give me a second here, I'm going to tunnel through this, see how it looks. Okay, so we got a little bit of a rough shape now figured out. Let's see how it is. Oh yeah, you can easily make it through there. Yep, simple. Alright, so we got it figured out, so just a simple, like, little curve here. I'll just fly right back into it, right down here. There we go. So yeah, you can easily fly through this, no problem. And yeah, it should be somewhat challenging, I think. But uh, yeah, we want to add a little bit of decoration on the inside of this. I probably want to, like, dig out the top just ever so slightly and the bottom ever so slightly so it gives it more of a round shape. And also maybe round out the sides just a little bit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back with the finished tunnel. Alright guys, so we got the tunnel done, looks like this, so we added a little bit of Vex Magic veins running through here, and we sort of rounded it off a little bit, we have a bunch of uh, slabs and stairs and things like that around here that sort of make up the uh, the tunnel a little bit. We also have the banner up top here, indicating it is part of the electric course, so this should be doable, let's go ahead and give it a shot. So if we fly on out this way, I'm just going to fly the course in the reverse direction. So this is the principal direction you come from, right here. So let's just boost this way, boost here, boost here, straight through here. Oh yeah, easy. Yeah, you can make that easily. Alright, so that should be perfect. And then you just blast down here and then go on to the rest of the course. So, perfect. That will work, so the elytra course is now back up and running. So ladies and gentlemen, with the completion of that tunnel, the tree farm is now complete. We greatly expanded the capacity for trees and tree chopping here. And also, I think this looks a lot better than it did previously. Uh, plus, we got some free wood and stuff for chopping down all the stripped logs that we placed here initially. So, I'm feeling good about this. I'm feeling good about this. So, that is the tree farm modernized completely. And now we're going to sort of switch gears a little bit. 
I was just recently informed by Joe Hills that he has actually left a prank of sorts off of the fourth hole of the golf course. He said he, he built a clock off the fourth hole of the golf course, so we're going to head out there. I want to see what he's built. I'm very curious because you never know what it will be with Joe. Um, so let's go ahead and head out there to the fourth hole right now. All right, so we're flying on down our big tunnel to the golf course here. We're going to go through the fifth hole portal because that will get us to the fourth hole green as quickly as possible. And yeah, absolutely love flying down this tunnel. Uh, this is the best tunnel on the, on the, on the, on the server, in the nether at least. Um, so yeah, definitely digging that we can fly on down it. There's a chicken right there. Came out of the portal here. And so yeah, this is the whole five portal, but this should take us to the whole four green area as well. Still have to put blocks behind here. I'm not sure why I haven't done that yet, but let's see what we got. Aha! There we go. Something new. Yeah, this is the ace right here. Nobody has made an ace yet on this hole to win this beacon here. Uh, so let's go ahead and head on over here. I think this is it. Don't see anything else around here that would be indicative of a prank. Yeah, this has got to be it. This is the clock, and I, it looks like... It's some type of sundial or Stonehenge, some type of ancient timekeeping device, it looks like. Nice. Yeah, this is definitely like a Stonehenge type thing. Some stones standing, some stones on the ground, some stones around like this. So this is like an ancient like Stonehenge-esque build by Joe Hills. So, yeah, nice. So we got a timekeeping device from Joe Hills. Would probably work better if I was using shaders, that way we have actual shadows on the ground. Um, but, yeah. This is supposed to be kind of a prank, but I think I'm going to keep it up. I think I'm going to keep it up because this is actually kind of a nice monument. If we uh, if we fly over here, when you're coming off the fourth hole green right here, you can look over, you see a nice little Stonehenge monument. It's like a nice little landmark for the golf course. So, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to keep it. Yeah, I think I think we'll definitely keep it. I think we'll definitely keep it. It looks really cool, like, off in the distance over there. Maybe we should add more stuff like this to the golf course, too, like little monuments and little like builds uh you know off the off the course or on top of a mountain and stuff like that that could be kind of cool add a little character to the course so yeah thank you joe for the sort of prank sort of build that you've made here off the fourth hole green and uh yeah thank you for the prank joe appreciate it man that's awesome <laughs> so anyways yeah with that let's go ahead and head on back to concord all right, guys, so we're back at Concorp now, and I'm looking around the area here. I was flying around, thinking about what we could put here, like what we would need to continue to build up Concorp here. And one of the things that came to mind is stuff in the sky. Like, the only thing we have in the sky right now... Let me just land on the speedboat here. The only thing we have in the sky right now is the satellite, which we made during the Civil War era, and it's got the Immortal Ender Crystal in there. Uh, with the beam going back toward the Civil War area. So, yeah, that's looking nice. Also, they changed the rendering on this. So now, even if I don't look directly at the Ender Crystal, the beam still renders in. So that's pretty awesome. That's a cool change. So you can see the beam uh, at more angles now. So that's cool. Um, but, yeah, I'm thinking somewhere in the sky here, it could be cool to have, like, drones bringing in pallets of materials for us think that could be cool. What I mean by pallets of materials is something similar to... Something similar to this right here. Maybe a little bit bigger than this, actually. But something with, like, oars uh, behind trap doors. And then maybe, you know, sitting on, like, some stripped wood pallets or something like that. So, I'm thinking what I'm going to do... I think, like, right here... I'd like to have some drones flying in a pallet of diamond blocks to Concorp. I think that would be pretty cool. So, we're going to head on out here. Hop on Captain Jack's raft. We'll head out into the middle of this thing. And, let's see, I'm thinking maybe... Maybe it could be, like, here coming in down toward the dock area. I think that could be kind of cool. So, let's see. Uh, let's see if I can grab this. And let's put it... We could actually put it, like, right here. This will be a little closer to the dock. This might actually work. Let's try this. I'm going to tower up with a whole bunch of scaffolding blocks here. And, yeah, we'll see where we end up and see if that's a good spot to put the drone. All right, so here's our scaffolding here coming up from the middle of the lake. And that's where the drone's bottom would be. I'm thinking maybe we bring it down about 
10 blocks or so, 10 or 12 blocks, I think would be an ideal like height. And so we'd have like the pal of stuff here, and then there'd be like some strings attaching to a couple of drones above that. I think that would be ideal. So let me get up here. I'm going to land on this bit of scaffolding. There we go. We're going to punch this out. Should fall down, and we'll just go down about, you know, 10 or 12 blocks. I think maybe about right here would be ideal. And then we'll probably have it, like, start out here, over the center of the lake. Alright, so we got the pallet itself now built, so you can see this right here. We got a little subtle CC in there, with the, uh, the stripped jungle logs making this the CC for Concorp. This is a Concorp pallet. Uh, then we're going to build up on the sides here some oak trapdoors. And this is going to be similar to what we have down at the docks, which I showed you a moment ago. So, with the emeralds down there. Holding in, the trapdoors are sort of holding in the emerald blocks. Uh, that's sort of the same idea here. Except this one's going to be open on the top. Uh, so we'll just get rid of all this stuff. Put down a couple more trapdoors here. There we go. Trapdoors here. Trapdoors here. Trapdoor here. Trapdoor here. There we go. Okay, cool. Now we need some diamond blocks, which I went and grabbed. And so this should... Give us enough diamond blocks to make a nice pallet type thing here. We're just going to go ahead and fill all this in with diamond blocks. There we go. So this is only one layer, actually, so we're going to need to grab a few more. For those of you who have never seen the vault, you're in for a treat. So that's the first level of security we have there. Basically, doors protected by lava that open like that. I think it's pretty neat. And yeah, you can actually see the lava inside here. Uh, if you haven't seen the vault door, check it out. Vault door right here. It's a 10 by 10 piston door right here that leads into the vault. And I actually have to check the combination uh, to get in here because I don't actually know what it is right now. <laughs> we change it quite frequently. Uh, and also we got to close the door, this big door behind us. There we go. Beautiful. You can see the Vex face back there as well. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Okay, let me check the combination here. All right, combination is being put in. And with that one... Yep, there we go. We got ourselves the vault opening up. I'm just going to jump on it. Ride it on down. There we go. Yep, you can see all the diamonds we got down here. So, might as well take a few from here. And use these in the drone up there. Should be pretty good. Don't think it should be too much of a problem. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we went ahead and finished up the pallet we had going on there. So this is what it's looking like from a distance here. So if we get closer, you can see we got some drones up here. There's actually four drones up here. Uh, they're the andesite and the iron trapdoor drones. So these guys right here. So these are what we use for reconnaissance during the... Uh, Area 77 storyline, so yeah, those are there. We also got some floating redstone torches here. Uh, these floating things are not actually floating. There is actually a glass pane, which you might be able to see here. Let's see if I can actually punch this guy off. Yeah, there's actually a glass pane right here, and you can then now place redstone torches on top of glass panes. So that is actually a new 1.14 feature, uh, which is super useful in this build because these redstone torches, especially at night, look really cool as they're like sort of outlining where the edge of the pallet is. Uh, and so we also added a few other things. So there are actually anvils in here. So there's an anvil right here. That's sort of anchoring this to the uh, to the pallet, basically anchoring each drone to the pallet. And then we have the iron bars acting as ropes. We also have some cobwebs up here that act as like, it sort of gives these drones like motion, like they've been traveling downwards this way toward the docks. Uh, getting ready to deliver the pallet. And then, of course, we have a lamp up here because we want to have this all be spawn-proof up here. So, I think it looks pretty cool. If we get on down here, see what it looks like from the city area here. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. So, you can see it sort of has motion, almost like it's coming toward you. And you can see there's some cool, like, floating lights on the side of it, um, which I think also look pretty cool sort of outline it. So, <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to keep that like it is right there. Yeah, that looks really nice. So, yeah, that is our drone pallet right there, and you can see the little subtle, very subtle CC on the bottom of the pallet, which is super cool. So, 
I really like it. I think I might actually make some more of these in the near future, potentially. Um, like, coming out here. Like, there's like a whole like line of them coming in, you know? That could be pretty cool. Uh, it also might be worthwhile to make like a drone uh, repair center and landing area over here. Because there's a whole lot of space over here we haven't really done much with. So maybe we make like a little drone like repair center, drone hangar, drone runway, uh, drone pallet drop off area potentially. That's a good shot of that. Wow, that looks nice from this this angle. Like they're coming straight down. <laughs> that's cool. So yeah, I'm liking the way that's looking. So with that, I think I'm going to have to call it an episode for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please do leave a like. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. And as always, thanks once again for watching. This has been Cobb. Goodbye.